Hello everybody, welcome to the webinar today for applications of image cytometry and digital pathology using the vector platform with FCS Express to analyze immune cell responses. My name is Sean Burke, I'm Senior Product Manager at DeNovo Software, and I'm joined today on the webinar by Dr. Tam Yuen, Senior Microscopy and Analyst at QIMR Berghofer Medical Research Institute, and Dr. Reshma Shakya, a Research Officer in Tumor Immunology at the Center for Immunotherapy and Vaccine Development, also at QIMR Berghofer. And in today's webinar, we're going to be covering a number of topics related to the Vectra software, and uh, FCS Express image cytometry and some of the science that's being done with these. So in the webinar today, we're going to be covering um, essentially advances in immune oncology have undoubtedly changed the standard of care for many different types of cancers. However, questions still remain as to why some patients respond better to certain therapies while others do not, and how we can effectively identify patients who will benefit from the therapy. Complex interactions between immune cells and cancer cells in the tumor microenvironment can impact on clinical responses to immunotherapy. So profiling the immune contexture of tumor microenvironment may help to identify prognostic and predictive biomarkers of response to immunotherapy. And recent developments of fluorescent multiplex IHC and multispectral imaging approaches have, dramatic, have drastically revolutionized in situ tissue analysis of the tumor and microenvironment. The integration of FCS Express image cytometry with the Vectra multispectral image analysis platform allows for efficient exploration and quantification of large complex image data sets while allowing access to visualize original images and data in context. And these methods are useful to analyze cellular phenotypes and the relationships within the spatial context of tumor microenvironment uh, in many different types of tissue sections. But today our panelists are going to share their experience in applying image cytometry software and digital image analysis to build up image analysis pipelines for immune contexture analysis and to identify biomarkers of response to immunotherapy. So again, in this webinar today, our panelists are going to describe some of their approaches to analyzing large, complex, vector-based image data sets using FCS Express image cytometry software. They're going to demonstrate how FCS Express image cytometry can help phenotype individual cell populations and facilitate co-expression studies in different tissue compartments. And finally, Dr. Reshma is going to explain uh, and discuss uh, how immune contexture and analysis can help identify biomarkers of response to immunotherapy. So with that, I want to flip over the presentation to Dr. Okay, thank you, Sean. And uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this webinar today. Um, I'd like to also thank DeNovo for giving uh, Reshma and myself this opportunity to present this webinar today. Um, and so just to give everyone a quick overview of, uh, the, um, of the outline of the agenda for today's webinar, we thought it'd be a good idea to split it into two parts. So for the first part, I'll be giving a very brief um, overview of what the Vectra platform is and how we use it in conjunction with FCS Express to analyze our multiplex IHC um, experimental data. I'll also quickly touch on how um, image cytometry data is generated from the Vectra images using Inform software and also how to export data so that it will be um, compatible with FCS Express. Rashma will then take over and present how she uses FCS Express to perform immunophenotyping and visualization of her research data from her work focusing on uh, tumor, tumor immunology of um, nasal pharyngeal carcinoma. And so immunophenotyping is one of the key methods used in uh, immunology and cancer research and has traditionally been carried out using flow cytometric techniques that benefit from both the ability to label a high number of markers simultaneously and uh, also the capacity to analyze very large numbers of cells, typically in the range of uh, tens of thousands. Um, high content or, and high throughput imaging platforms such as the InCell, the Operetta, the uh, Cell Insight um, can offer comparable data volume and power but both of these techniques are generally limited to dissociated tissues and cultured cell systems with no tissue, color, uh, no tissue localization context 
which can be very important to understanding mechanisms underlying tumor immunology and, um, and thus immunotherapy. Um, and so for techniques that do provide tissue localization context, such as imaging of fixed tissue sections and biopsies, there hasn't really been a viable option that offered com uh, comparable capacity and volume in terms of uh, number of cells analyzed compared to flow cytometry. There are certainly a lot of people out there who are doing uh, immunohistochemical chromogenic staining and imaging of tissue biopsies on slides, but this is generally limited to uh, one or two markers. Um, then there are systems that, uh, um, that can image and analyze fluorescence labeled tissue, such as the tissue facts and the perio versus systems, which allow you to image up to four fluorescence markers in an automated fashion, but um, with four markers, it's not really much of an improvement over standard fluorescence microscopy. And so in looking for a platform that can overcome at least some of these limitations, we found that the Vectra was a pretty good fit with its um, automated acquisition and uh, spectral imaging and unmixing capabilities, allowing for uh, acquisition of up to um, six fluorescence markers. Um, I should probably also mention that the uh, tissue facts has only recently come out with a uh, spectral imaging version, thus making it functionally on par with the Vectra. But um, at the time that we uh, that we acquired the Vectra um, around the uh, beginning of 2016, it was the only system uh, that was capable of doing multispectral imaging in a semi-automated um, image cytometry type format. Uh, this slide describes our typical workflow for immune contexture analysis. So you generally have your tissue samples from either uh, human uh, subjects or mouse models. And then you would design a panel of markers relevant to the biological or clinical questions that you want to ask, followed by the immunostaining of, um, of those markers using uh, a TSA-based staining method. Um, either by uh, using a commercial kit such as the uh, the, the Opal uh, uh, dye kits available from Perkin Elmer or using in-house staining. Um, the slides are then imaged on the Vetra and uh, spectrally unmixed and also and then you can then uh, segment out your your individual cells and tissues. Um, Inform itself. Uh, has its own phenotyping function. However, we find that the, uh, uh, when it does this, it tends to struggle um, to uh, correctly uh, phenotype uh, some of those cells. For example, if you look at this image here, um, the red cells are CD3 uh, stain cells, the green cells are CD8 stain cells, and if you look at the uh, cluster of cells in the middle here, you can see that the INFORMS um, uh, phenotyping algorithm has uh, correctly phenotyped these two cells here, uh, which are double positive for CD3 and CD8. Uh, however, you can also see that the cells next to them have been incorrectly phenotyped as also CD3 and CD8 double positive. Um, the same can be uh, seen here in this cluster of cells. So this cell here has the correct phenotype. Uh, whereas these two cells here have been also incorrectly uh, phenotyped um, because they clearly uh, don't express either of those markers. And so while uh, INFORM does phenotype a lot of the cells correctly, it tends to struggle when uh, there are cells uh, next to each other that express different phenotypes. And uh, as a user, uh, you have little or very uh, little or no control over how uh, or the little control over the parameters that the algorithm uses to, uh, to determine or to make the, those phenotyping decisions um, and, and how they are set and applied. And so with FCS Express uh, and its ability to link the fluorescence data with, um, with the image data, we find that we can have more control over the phenotyping process where we can have a visual reference from which to set our phenotype gates in order to identify um, and enumerate different cell populations more accurately. 
But before we can get to that stage of data analysis in FCS Express, we have to generate that data from the acquired images. And I'm just going to quickly run through how that's done in uh, the Inform software that is part of the uh, Vectra platform. So the raw multispectral images that come off the Vectra can be imported into Inform to be uh, spectrally unmixed and to remove uh, background autofluorescence and yield individual component channels that have been corrected for any spectral overlap between the different fluorophores. Uh, the, the unmixed images, you can then um, proceed to segment out different components of your sample, such as different tissue architecture, followed by segmentation of the indi individual cells based on the presence of uh, DAPI stain nuclei. And so we look at one of these segmented cells in more detail. We can see that for every cell, there is a nuclear mask and also a cytoplasmic mask from which the fluorescence uh, information is, is, is recorded against the cell ID and, um, and, 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 and tabulated into a uh, cell segmentation uh, data table that can be exported at the end. Um, and it is this table that FCS Express will reference to plot the data of the various parameters in whichever plot type you desire. So in the end, you attain fluorescence data from every channel of every cell that has been segmented in your sample. And so for those who are familiar with flow cytometry, this data format is uh, not too dissimilar to flow cytometry data, which is why FCS Express is such a great application for analyzing uh, this type of data. And of course, for an institute such as ours that is heavily focused on immunology and cancer, with flow cytometry, being an established and core technique, using FCS Express to analyze image, imaging data provides a familiar environment and easier transition for those who are more used or who are more used to analyzing flow cytometry data. One limitation of the Vectra is that it doesn't do tile imaging. So to cover an entire piece of tissue, you have to uh, place enough of these panels to uh, uh, cover the region that's required. And each panel will be saved as an individual image. So when you uh, segment and process the images, you end up with um, lots of separate files that in fact comes from the one tissue sample. And so prior to implementation of uh, informed data compatibility in uh, FCS Express, we had to do some really cumbersome and uh, manual merging of data files to aggregate all of that data into one data set. FCS Express now does this automatically by reading and matching the file names and combining all of the data from the individual images and plots them as a single entity for analysis, uh, which is uh, really cool. And I'd like to commend DeNovo for implementing almost all of the features and functionality that we've, um, we've, we've asked for to make the analysis process um, much more efficient. And uh, you'll see how some of those features work later in uh, Reshma's demonstration of, uh, of the software. Um, so once the segmentation process is completed, the data can be exported uh, for analysis in FCS Express. And so with the recent update incorporating the informed data compatibility, there are some important uh, points that users need to be aware of to make sure that uh, your data can be loaded into FCS Express without any issues. All of this is already covered in a previous webinar that I believe is available online to view, but uh, I'll quickly go through it here. So on the uh, Inform uh, uh, software data export page, you can see that there are lots of options for, uh, in terms of uh, images and data files that can be uh, exported. The absolute three minimum data files that you require to successfully load your data into FCS Express are these ones here, uh, that I've highlighted in the red boxes. Um, the component images are the uh, unmixed single channel images that can be plotted and linked with your gates to help you set your gate boundaries. Um, the binary segmentation maps are, your, um, are the cytoplasmic and nuclear mask images that uh, FCS Express will use to highlight the cells that are being gated on. And the uh, cell segmentation data file itself, which can, of course contains the fluorescence data of your cells. Um, everything else is optional. 
so if you uh, would like to use some of the uh, pathology view images or the composite images in your layouts, then um, please go ahead and export them as well. Uh, in terms of what goes into the uh, cell segmentation cell segmentation data file, uh, you'll obviously want to have all of your uh, fluorescence uh, information from all of your channels, um, and then you can select how that data uh, is represented. So we normally use uh, mean and total fluorescence. And the X and Y positions of your cells are also very important, as FCS Express will use those coordinates to highlight the cells that uh, you have gated on. Um, shape stats and everything else um, are again optional. And so if you do all of that while, when you're exporting your data, then you shouldn't have any problems loading um, that informed data into FCS Express. Um, and so with that, I will now hand over to Reshma, who's going to show you how she uses FCS Express to analyze and perform immunophenotyping of data from her own research, looking at uh, immune responses in nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Thanks, Tam, and thanks, Son. Um, I'm gonna begin with a very brief overview on immunotherapy and immune contexture of the tumor microenvironment and how quantitative image analysis-based multiplexing can be used to identify the markers of response and resistance to therapy. And as many of us know that the field of immuno-oncology is exploding and immunotherapy is now considered as a fourth pillar of cancer therapy. It's complementing the surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Now, due to its quick success in clinics, there are now over 2,000 immunotherapeutic agents uh, in the market across the world. And this is just a quick snapshot showing that um, how Remarkable advances is from uh, 2010 to 2017 in terms of uh, the various immunotherapeutics that have received approval for several different types of cancers, such as melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, bladder cancer, head and neck cancer, and multiple myeloma, and uh, so on. So this really reflects that uh, there are an enormous amount of efforts being focused on fighting cancer using immunotherapy. And on our, like our lab uh, has been actively working on adoptive T-cell therapy approach to treat virus-associated malignancies such as nasopharyngeal carcinoma and uh, GVM, and also other complications that are associated with viruses such as um, in the solid organ transplant patient and multiple sclerosis. And these are the list of um, immunotherapy trial that uh, our lab has been running and some hasn't completed. So we have done a clinical follow-up uh, study on those NPC and GVM patients who completed our phase one trial. And these are the follow-up data on 31 NPC trial patients who re received uh, the EVV specific uh, T cell therapy. And uh, this graph here is a swimmer's plot in which um, the patients, these are the plots from the 31 NPC patients. And uh, those patients have been categorized into two groups uh, based on their disease status. And the green bar here shows the patients who are still alive and the red bar here shows disease patients, deceased patients, sorry. And uh, the one on the diamond uh, one, the symbol represents uh, uh, the time when the T cells were infused, and the black squares are the time uh, when the disease progressed. So from this plot, similar plot, we can clearly see that uh, there, there um, are patients who responded very well to this therapy, and uh, uh, it has uh, improved the survival of the patient, uh, some of the patient, but again, there are patients who have, uh, who did not show response to the therapy and now again, this is a similar plot for 11 of our GBM patients who received a CMV-specific T-cell therapy. And uh, we know that GBM is a very aggressive type of brain cancer, and it has a very low survival. And uh, But with our therapy, uh, with used uh, CMV-specific T-cell therapy, it has really improved the survival in some of the patients we can see, and these patients are still alive. 
and uh, the, the, the survival ranges from 4.1 years to 10.9 years. So um, there are patients who have responded to the therapy, but again, uh, there are some patients who have not uh, responded well to our therapy. So this clearly says, just suggests to us that uh, not all the patients respond to immunotherapy in the same way. And there are some patients who respond better while others, they don't. So the question really is, how can we select the patient who will benefit from the therapy? And how can we turn those non-responders into responders? Uh, and uh, maybe giving a combination therapy would uh, then help. Uh, but then we need to know which patient is going to benefit from the therapy and select the best one for that particular therapy. And there are now literature which suggests that there are three kind of uh, classes of non-responders in terms of their immune contexture and uh, that can show varying degree of response to immunotherapies. And one that is called the immune desert and where there is no immune cell present, the one that's uh, labeled in the brown, uh, they show that's uh, immune cells and uh, which is completely absent in this particular immune desert samples. And these are the patients who do not respond well to the immunotherapy and we need to induce T cell inflammations in those patients. And the other type is the immune excluded. So in this type of patients, we see a lot of immune cells present, but they are at the border, but they are not infiltrated, infiltrating into the tumors. So we need to enhance their T cell function for them to be able to get into the tumor. And the other type is the inflamed tumor, where we see that the activated immune cells are inside the tumor bed, but the tumors are not being killed because there is a suppression in the tumor microenvironment. Uh, for example, the tumors could be expressing PDL1 or the immune cells could be expressing the checkpoint inhibitors such as PD1 or TIM3 uh, or uh, PD1 and TIM3, both of them, which can suppress the T cell functions. So um, there are different types of immune cells present but we don't know what type they are. So we really need to, to identify the phenotype of those immune cells to, to be able to overcome the, uh, the immune suppressions. So to really phenotype them properly and to look at their distribution within the different compartment of the tissue, we need to label multiple proteins in the tissues. And that is how we can do this by using this technique called multiplexed immunohistochemistry, which allows you to label multiple different proteins in histological tissue sections. Now, this is one of the multiplexed image of um, uh, the NPC tissue, where we were looking at the expression of our checkpoint markers, TIM3 and PD1, uh, on TCD8 slash toxic T cells. And uh, the, the green here are the CD8 cells and the yellow or the PD-1, and TIM-3 are the magenta. And we used pancytokeratin, uh, which is an epithelial marker to define our tumor region. So we used uh, this informed software to do our tissue segmentation and cell segmentation. And then as uh, Tam has already explained about it, we then exported this, um, this data and then imported it into FCS Express to do our phenotyping. But um, we can have score of the phenotyping from INFORM, uh, but the scores are sort of difficult to interpret, especially uh, when you have multiple different co-expressing markers like this, when you have CD8, TIM3, and PD1 um, to all together in the same cell. Um, so we are actually restricted in some of the analyses that we do. So that's why we wanted to see if we could take our vector data and then mine it further. And uh, that's why we uh, collaborated with FCS Express uh, to get into this uh, level. Uh, now we can do phenotyping of the on the co-expression markers and we can do picture plot, we can do data mapping, we can do automated data management all in one that we haven't been able to do previously. And that is what I want to show you in this uh, next video is that um, how we profile our tumor 
um, and multiplexed samples using SCS Express. So I've already recorded uh, the way that we do this, uh, the entire uh, data analysis on the, in the FCS Express. So this is the front page of the SCS Express, the first layout that you can create as you like. So here I've got the protocol that I've run and I've also included the patient information and the date and the specimen type. And I've also uh, included a text box where I could include uh, my tissue and tumor and stroma and other analysis summary by directly just dragging the values and then uh, importing into it. So underneath down here, I've got a multiple tabs that I've already labeled them. So the first step is to insert uh, the picture plot and you go insert picture plot. Then it will, uh, after this webinar, I have already ha uh, have got the two, eight different NPCs uh, patient data in one folder. So you click onto one sample, and this, are, this is the sample where I have scanned 32 fields of views from one tissue. And you can either click on component data or cell segmentation data to open the file, uh, but you have to make sure that you are in that protein or vector files tab to be able to open it. So you go and click on one image and then you open the file. This will open up the entire um, images, the way you have uh, acquired it in Vectra. So you can load another file. Again, you go to the folder and you click on one image. You double click on the file and press OK. And then it will display three files the way it was acquired in Vectra. So you can do the same thing and you can load one more. So here I've got a, an image from four different fields of views and they were quite adjacent to each other. That's why they look as if they are acquired uh, from one fields of view. Um, so, so in the x-axis, you can see that there are different options to select uh, the different channels. We are currently in autofluorescence and we can select the channels PD-1, CD-8, or we can select the path view if you have exported it. And we can also have a composite view. So here I have got a composite image and very nicely I can even see the tumor area which is in cyan and I've got a cluster of cells, which is PD-1 positive in orange. And then I've got a cells in magenta, which are CD8. And then I've got a cells in the green, which are uh, my team three positive cells. And within here, I will be having a double positive and triple positive cells, which can be in the tumor or in the stroma. And that's what we want, that's what we want to tease out. So we can minimize this by restoring the image. And then we will, copy this image and then paste it into the next layout. So what we want to do next is now we want to segment the tissue. Because we have already reported the information from Vectra about our tissue segmentation, as Tam has already mentioned that uh, we, if we export the, the information from from the from the Vectra from the Inform software, you will have to um, assign individual values to the way you segment. For example, if you are segmenting tumor region, you'll have to give a numeric value, either one or two or three. And this is what we have done. So if for this is a this is what we are going to now extract into this particular software and then overlay it on top of uh, the image. So here, I've just clicked on histogram plot, and on the x-axis, you can see that there are all the variables that was exported from the Vectra cell segmentation. So we have all the columns that we used to see in the cell segmentation data. So we'll click on tumor tissue category, we'll right click and we'll click on format. Then we'll go to axis, linear, 
and we'll type here for the reason why we're doing this is because in inform we have created a scenario in which we have called tumor as one and stroma as two and others as three other could be anything non-tumor area or the area of disinterest so we'll click ok and then it will show you the, the, the cell count that is present in that particular compartment. So you can gate it, you could put a marker gate. That's our tumor, and that's our stroma, 88% is, and that's our others. So you can again double click on it and then go to markers and you can label it. You can give a marker gate tumor, stroma, and then marker three as others. So next what we want to do is we want to then map those data onto our images. So we'll do, the, do this by linking our histogram to our plot. And we'll do this by right clicking and then convert marker to gate and then marker convert and link. So we'll type here tumor to link those data with the image. So again, we'll do the same for stroma, and then we'll do the same for our uh, others. With this, what we will be able to do now is overlay those segmentation, those we, were, we did in Inform, so we did the segmentation in the Inform software and it created a mask. So we have now imported those information into FCS Express. So all this segmentation that we now see with this gate is from, from Inform. So I've gated on tumor. So you can see all the tumor areas being highlighted here and all the rest of the stroma has uh, become dimmer. And if you want to now get rid of uh, the background image, you can right click, go format, and you can say overlays. And then you can uncheck those show background image box and then it will get rid of background and it will only show you the, the tumor area. You can do the same now again for stroma. So we'll do the same for stroma. We'll click on stroma, we'll preview it, and now you can see that it's only showing you the cells that are in stroma, but they are not show the cells in the tumor are invisible. So you can go to picture plot and then you can ask it to display those gates, tumor, stroma, and then you can preview it. So it will, set, it will show you all the cells, the tumors, the gate, because we have turned off all the gates and we are displaying the gates. Um, so what this is doing, this is showing you all the cells that are present in the tumor as well as in the stroma. So you can turn on the background and the and CK will turn on. So this is very important because to be able to know where your cells are, whether they are in tumor or stroma, you need to be able to map your data from uh, the Vectra, uh, from the Inform software into this one. And the other thing that I would like to mention is you could uh, because you know your pan-cytokeratin area is a tumor, you could draw a polygonal gate and then you can draw the region around to really call it as a tumor and just look at um, and call that as tumor and do the analysis on that particular area. But then uh, you won't be, you, you, it can't be consistent across the same image, uh, across every image. So you, you can't keep doing in every images. So that is why it is important that we get this information from the informed software and then import it into this software to make an overlay of where the tumor cells are and where the stromal cells are. So next we have copied the image and then we've pasted it into the next layout. So we can now switch it back to DABI to make it more 
uh, visible. So you can see the red as tumor area and this, uh, the, the gray areas are the stromal areas. Now what we want to do is return on CDA cells. So you can see the distribution of the CDA cells in different compartment of the tissue. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off uh, the gates for tumor and stroma and we will just look at CD8 it only and then we will try to segment um, the cells. Basically we are not segmenting the cells here. We are already using the information from INFORM. So INFORM has done the cell segmentation and we've, we've got all the information about um, the um, the information on the nucleus and the cytoplasmic compartment. So we, the, what we're going to do now is we're going to plot a histogram for the CD8. And so we'll take a mean cytoplasmic CD8 for this one. And then we're going to change the axis to log format. And change this to the reasonable value. So here is a histogram. Uh, you, you, you can see that there is, you can't really see a very, it's very rare to find a nice biphasic peak in, in with the image data because of the way you get background with it and the background, you can't separate uh, the background from your signal. Um, not every time you get that with, maybe if you are doing a single plex, then you would be able to get a clear cut um, separation. But with the multiplexing, there is always some level of background that you see. So when you're plotting a histogram, it's, it's, it's very difficult to get a nice biphasic peak. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna assume that they are a positive cells and we'll put a marker gate on that. So we think, okay, that particular little peak is a positive cells and we'll call that as a positive populations. And we'll go to marker and we will gate it and call it as CD8 positive cells. Then we will go to link those to our image. And we'll call it as CD8. So now what we can do is we can right click on the image and for, go into format and we can ask it to display CD8 cells that we have gated. Now it has, it's showing you all the cells that we have gated and we can now adjust it by looking at the positive cells. Now you can even magnify the area of interest and then you can, you can, you can just set your gate where you think is positive. And now you can switch between the samples. You can change it into different samples and then verify it whether the gates has been um, applied correctly or not. So if you think now that's okay, then we will just set it like that. So the other important information is over here, we see this value. So this value is very important because this is the minimum cutoff that we have, um, we, we, we've been able to get from this gating. So this cutoff can be used in, uh, if we were to use this data in some, uh, to do some other analysis in other softwares to set a cutoff, for example, if we are using, if you are to use this data in R, to do more of a distance calculations or distance analysis stuff, then you can use this cutoff and to set your positive populations. Now we'll switch it back to the same image and then we'll do the same for uh, the other um, channels like uh, PD-1 and also Team three. So we'll duplicate this particular histogram for PD1 and we'll duplicate this one again for team three. So on the x-axis we can change it to the mean of the cytoplasmic PD1. And then we can just think of this. Uh, 
PD1. And now we can link it to the image by right clicking and then going into convert marker to gate, convert the link, and we can call it as PD1. Now we'll do the same for team three as well. I think we forgot to change the color in the PD1, so we're gonna right click on that histogram again. And we'll change the color of it uh, to orange. And now we're gonna do the same for the team three as well. So this is, you can see that how quick and easy it is to really now get your positive populations because I remember in Inform I used to uh, go after one after another images to, to know whether my um, cutoff was something real or not and would um, maybe like we have said that particular cutoff would I be then able to apply that cutoff in all the images or not this was my major concern but um, now because of this FCS Express software, you can, um, you, can, you can switch between the samples to check whether your gates, um, to ver verify your gates and know whether you want the gate in one can be applied to all the samples or you might need to change the gate for your samples depending on the quality of the staining. So here I have converted, I've, this is the PD-1 gate that is being displayed. So we are now under PD-1 channel. And you can, say that, you can see that as you, can, as you move the gates, you can visualize the populations. Now we'll change it to team three and we'll do the same for team three as well. You can go format and picture plot will display team three and we'll uncheck PD1, okay. And now we can just move around and find the best gate. So this is really easy to set the threshold. Now we'll go format and we'll try to um, turn on all those three colors all at once. Now you can see very nicely CD8 cells in magenta and orange here, my PD1 cells and team three cells, are, uh, the green ones are PD1 cells. Now the other thing is within these cells, I could have a double positive cells. So the cells could be expressed in PD1. So I, could, I would have CD8 and PD1 positive cells. I might be having CD8, PD1 and team three positive cells so for that, what we do is it's, it's, very, it's very easy in this particular software. So we'll switch back to CD8, and then we will add a combination gate. So we will we'll say that we are gonna create P, CD8 positive and PD1 positive, double positive cells. So we can use this function called AND, and we can write CD8 and PD1, and it will then create a gate of CD8 and PD1 positive cells. We can do the same for CD8 and team three positive cells. And we can say CD8 positive, team, team three positive, and we'll write CD8 and team three, and it, then it will create a gate. And we can do the same for our triple positives, which is CD8 positive, PD1 positive, and team three positive. And then it will create a gate for this, triple positives. Now, within this CD8 and PD1 pos double positives, I will be having the cells that are positive for team three. So I would like to have the cells that are positive for CD8, PD1 positive, but negative for team three. So to do that, we will again add the combination gate and we will call this gate as CD8 positive, PD1 positive and TIM3 negative. And we'll, we'll write this, um, this function called not. So if we say not TIM3, then it will get, if it will remove TIM3, TIM3 positive cells. So if you put it under the gate 
CD8 positive, PD1 positive, it will remove the TIM3 positive cells from this double positive, CD8 positive, PD1 positive cells. Now we can do the same thing for CD8 and TIM3 positive, double positive cells. We want to remove PD1 positive cells. So we will again create a gate called CD8 positive, TIM3 positive, and PD1 negative. And we'll, we'll, we'll write a function called not PD1. And then it will remove PD1 if you put it under CD8 positive, TIM3 positive gate. We'll change the color to cyan. So now you can visualize those triple positives and double positive cells. You can uncheck these and then you can check those double positive gate that just you just created. And then you can preview it. Now you can see that there are red cells that are my triple positive cells and the yellow and cyan are my double positive cells. So this is, uh, see how this is very quick um, in terms of uh, if you want to look at double positives uh, and triple positive uh, populations. And what you can even do is now you can change it to gate tumor. So it will only show the cells, double positives and triple positive cells that are in tumor area. In this particular image, we don't have uh, the double positive or maybe triple positive cells, or maybe I, we have one double positives in this, in, in, in just one in tumor. So if we change the gate and go back to stroma, now we see a lot of double positives and triple positive cells in the stroma. So we'll switch it back to no gate and it's showing us all the cells that are positives in, in both tumor and stroma gate. Now next thing that we can do is now we want to calculate how many cells are present in the tumor, how many cells are present in the stroma and not just CD8, PD1 and TIM3 but all the, uh, the gates that we have created, double positives and triple positives. So what we do next is here, we can go to gate statistics here, but since we have uh, selected this no gate, it's gonna show you all the cells that are uh, there in this particular image, irrespective of whether it's a tumor or a stroma. So you can see that you get the value, the number of cells that are in tumor, number of cells that are in stroma, and CD8, PD1, TIM3 positive, and the double positives and triple positive cells that are in this particular tissue. So now what we will do is we'll restore this, and then we'll organize this particular layout. And we'll copy this particular image. And then we'll paste it into our layout for tumor. So we will then right click on it and then we will get the statistics. So we first go to the tumor gate and then we will get statistics. And here you can see the cells that are positive only in the tumor area. You can do the same for stroma. You can copy the same image and then you can paste it into the different layout or in the same layout. And you can go to stroma gate and then you get statistics. And you can get the information on how many positives and double positives, triple positive cells are there in, in stroma. Now you can, you can, to, you can even switch between the samples. Um, but before doing that, we're going to now also make a dot plots. So this is a color dot plot, and we're gonna uh, create a dot plot of mean of cytoplasmic team three and mean of uh, cytoplasmic PD one. Then we'll right click on this, we'll go to format, and we'll change the axis to log.
and we'll, we'll display the cells CD8, PD1, TIM3, and our triple positive cells. So we can preview it and you can see all the cells. Now, the difference between the full symmetry data and the misometry data is you have a very well separated line here because you have defined the threshold for the cells. Now you can do the same for the stroma. You can copy the same image. Now this is under stroma gate. We can copy this image, this plot, and then we can paste it into our tumor layout. And then we can change the gate to tumor. So there are a lot of other uh, plots that you can plot depending on uh, what kind of plots that you want to display. And, uh, and as you switch between the, the different samples, the gates and uh, the statistics will get updated automatically. So you don't have to change it unless you are changing the threshold. So we'll go back to the large file, which has got 39 images and we will upload that. So this is um, the image which has 39 um, the, in the fields of views. We can display um, or maybe you can delete it like that. You can maximize it, and then you can magnify into the area you are interested in, and you can see very nicely the triple positive cells in red. So we'll go back to the same original image for now. So you can also select uh, what are the information that you want to um, get on your statistics table. So you can go with geometric mean or, um, or your median, or if you want to uncheck any of these percentage of the data cells or, or any of the, the, the thing that you don't need, you can just uncheck that. So the last tab that we will have now is I, I will we'll talk about the batch export as well. So the other thing that we really want to do is export all of these information into either an Excel file or PDF or PowerPoint. And FCS Express has got all of these options to do. And you can do the batch and you can combine them all together in one file or you can um, select an option to to save it into individual files. So I have exported uh, my data for these eight NPC samples. So I'm going to show you the data that I exported, uh, the Excel file and even PDF and even PowerPoint file that I have generated uh, using FCS Express. So the last tab is about a pathologist comment. If you have any comments or if you want anyone to comment on this, you can always have another tab put and then the, ask their comments. So I'm going to now show you the, the file that I exported using FCS Express for those eight samples. So this is a Excel file that I generated. So 
I have exported it for all of the eight NPC patients. And these are my tumor gates. Um, and it's telling these are the number of events that I exported. You could also export the percentage of the positive cells. But for this, for this, for my experiment, I only exported the number of positive uh, events. So this, this is the total cells, and number of events is that is in the, this is the CD8 events in the tumor gate, and this is a PD1, and this is TIM3, and this is double positives, your double positives only, and then this is your triple positives. And uh, I've also export, exported everything in one go for both tumor and stroma. So it's all in the same file. So they are all um, and side by side. So you can also put this in a different tab if you like. And um, if you want, you can also add additional co columns here and put your tissue segmentation data. And uh, you can do the calculations of the area of the, t the tumor and the stroma area and then uh, you can get your value in cells per millimeter, or you can also get your value in percentage, uh, depending on the type of um, the experiments that you're doing. So here, I've got a PDF that I exported for all of these um, that these um, eight samples. So I have 80, 80, 48 different pages for all the patients, and all the information that I had added here. I, it's it's all automated. This it just updates automatically, so you don't have to do um, it manually. So next, I'll show you the PowerPoint. I don't think I have it PowerPoint here, but I think um, this is really what I really wanted to show that you can get um, a lot of information uh, for using FCS Express, and it's quick as well. And you can look at the image side by side, and you can get more confidence on your data analysis. So with that, I would like to say that FCS Express 6, um, uh, we, now we can phenotype co-expressing markers and uh, we can do picture plot and automated data merging and cleanup and even batch analysis all in one go in FCS Express. So um, hopefully um, we, in, in the future, what we think is uh, we'll be able to um, do is uh, ha have an immunoscore, like uh, the immune contextual analysis that involves some multiplexing of our IHC uh, that can help uh, with patient, patient selections and, or maybe the treatment plan. And lastly, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my colleagues uh, and also uh, the histology and uh, imaging and flow cytometry facility uh, members at QIMR Berkhofer and uh, all our collaborators and also our funding bodies and also to De Novo software. Uh, this has been a great collaboration with De Novo to take in uh, the image analysis into this level and it's been great working with them. So thank you De Novo and thank you everyone. Great, and thank you for the presentations, Rashma and Tam. Uh, it's been interesting for me to see uh, some of this for the first time as well. And with this, uh, we'd like to open up the floor for any questions that folks may have. Uh, I'm going to put up the screen here, and uh, we'll let a few questions come through. Uh, but again, the team at QIMR Berghofer uh, has really been instrumental in allowing FCS Express to read data from the vector instruments. And again, a really big thank you to both of you, Tam and Rashma. I know you've been kind of at the forefront of, you know, kind of testing out the software and giving uh, constant kind of work and feedback. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, we try and, you know, make those improvements to the technology as they come in. Um, so again, you know, very, very many thanks for doing that and also for presenting today. Uh, and again, we have a few questions that uh, have come in here. Um, so I guess one question, I, I don't know if it's best for Tam or Reshma, uh, but do you kind of find users, um, you know, when people are using the Vector platform and FCS Express, um, yeah, how much kind of like training do you have to put in for that? I mean, I know you showed a kind of a, a lot of kind of complex work with the Vector instrument and the imaging and FCS Express. Um, I mean, is it hard for people to kind of get going on this? 
Um, so I guess uh, on the on the side of the uh, the Vectra instrument itself, it's uh, it's pretty automated. So uh, I get this as with any instruments, um, you always have a little bit of a learning curve at, at at start. But I guess the hardest part that we found with uh, or the most uh, taxing part of the whole process is actually getting the panel design and optimization right. And that's been pretty much the the thing that's uh, that's taken up the most time. I guess once you've optimize your panel and get your fluorescence signals uh, uh, working well, um, the rest of it actually works quite quite easily. So um, the vector itself, um, getting up to speed on that is not too 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 hard. And, and the good thing about the vector is it does most of its work automated in an automated fashion. Yeah, you just set your uh, your your exposure times. Um, and then uh, it'll just churn through the number of slides that, um, that you've, you've asked it to. Uh, in terms of the SCS Express software, uh, for those people already using it for flow cytometry, it's going to be a cinch because you already know the layout and the environment. Um, for those that are new to the software, uh, I think Donovo has uh, intentionally made it very um, familiar in terms of the layout. So, uh, you know, we always uh, tell new users that you just imagine uh, FCS as like a PowerPoint presentation. So whatever you you'd want you would want to do in a PowerPoint presentation, you would do almost exactly the same um, in, in FCS Express. Um, so I think most of our users have uh, taken uh, taken on both of those uh, either the Vectra and the FCS Express side of things quite quite well. Great. So uh, essentially, what kind of studies, if any, do you, do you have planned for the future, you know, utilizing this sort of technology? It seems like you've done a lot of work now, and I imagine you've probably got some plans on where you want to head in the future. Yeah, with the multiplex immunistic chemistry, the biggest challenge was uh, to set the threshold and to be able to analyze the vector data, and which we can now do using FCS Express platform quite uh, easily, um, and it saves a lot of our time. But I think uh, to take this um, analysis into the next level, we would uh, more be interested in doing the distance calculations and uh, looking at um, the, doing this different spatial measurements. Um, so I think if uh, if we if if, if, if if FCS Express can really um, make those changes or can update in their software, we will be then I think on the forefront of all different uh, software that can do this kind of analysis. So obviously yes, uh, distance calculations and uh, more of the sophisticated um, analysis that we do with the imaging data. Uh, we would like to. It, um, getting in, into uh, FCS Express. Great. And uh, one of the questions that came in in the beginning, Tam, when you were kind of discussing about phenotyping and uh, you know how sometimes it can be uh, incorrect in the vector software, um, is there is there any sort of way of kind of retraining the vector software to make sure it better identifies phenotypes, or is there a certain kind um, of yeah, so so the way that the phenotype, uh, the inform phenotyping uh, module works is that you nominate. Uh, so after you segment segment out the cells, you uh, then nominate uh, cells that are of certain phenotypes based on their stain, and you you give uh, as many examples of those as possible, and then you, and obviously you train the uh, machine learning uh, based algorithm to to then um, uh, execute that uh, that phenotyping. Uh, and even when we do um, try and uh, train and, and give as many examples of those uh, um, uh, different phenotype cells as possible, we still see on some occasions where it does uh, misphenotype a lot of the cells. And so uh, the, the example that I showed was only on a two, uh, a two marker sample, essentially. Um, and we found that when we increase our, our panel to like six, um, that problem only gets uh, gradually worse. And so uh, I guess the point was that uh, with the uh, inform software, even though, like I said, it does segment uh, or phenotype a lot of those cells correctly, it's just that you can't have any control over how it actually does that. Um, um, and so we found that with FC Express, with the ability to, um, to actually set the gates Based on uh, the signals uh, and the intensity of the of the fluorophores themselves, 
just gives us that like, little bit extra um, level of control um, so that we can uh, get the more accurate data. Great. Yeah, and with that, it uh, looks like there's no additional questions. Uh, there might be one or two follow-ups after the webinar. But again, thank you, everyone who attended the webinar today, and uh, again to our presenters, uh, Tam and Reshma, for uh, giving us this really interesting background on these two technologies and how it's actually coming together to have impactful results on uh, cancer biology and, and research. So thanks again to both of you, and thanks again to everybody who attended. Great. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. Take care and have a good day. Bye-bye.